Here we will discuss the topic of convergence of measurable functions. Uh, we have a, a few, in fact, different convergences, which are applicable to measurable functions. So we fix a sequence, fn, and we also fix another function f. Uh, all of them are measurable with respect to the given measure space. Now, we have the following list of convergences, which generally apply to measurable functions. Uniform convergence, uh, that's normally what people write when they talk about uniform convergence, so they use this double arrow, and the definition of that is given here. That is, we say that fn converges to f uniformly when, in fact, this supremum of the differences, like that, it's something which depends on n, it goes to zero. Uh, there is a concept of pointwise convergence, which is normally denoted like this. And by definition, this is just that this limit goes to zero, and that's true for every x in your universal, in your uni universal space x, universal set x. There is a minor variant of the pointwise convergence. In fact, that's the one which replaces pointwise convergence when we talk about me when we talk about measurable functions. This is the almost everywhere convergence. This is something which is defined like this. We normally write these symbols. We put a dot e dot above it, and the definition of that is like this: uh, the measure of the set X take A is zero, where the set A is a set of convergence points for the sequence Fn. So it's a collection of those points in the universal set X where we observe the convergence. So this identity in fact says that the limit exists and equal to this value. So the complement complementing set will be a collection of those points where either limit doesn't exist or limit does exist but the identity fails. And finally, we also have the, the weakest out of all, and I'll explain the term the weakest in a second, the measure topology or measure convergence. We normally write, we normally write something like this. It, this. This is the one which depends on the measure. And the definition of that is that the limit like so. The limit like so. Um, is zero, where I look at the limit as a collection of those points where this difference is bigger than given positive number epsilon and this limit must be zero for every number epsilon. If this is so, we, we say that the sequence fn converges to f in measure topology. Now, the simplest lemma, the simplest, rela the simplest relation between these four types of convergences for measurable functions is given by this chain of implications. Uh, a uniform converging sequence implies pointwise convergence, which in turn implies convergence almost everywhere, which in its turn implies the convergence in measure topology. I call this implication A, I call this implication B, and I call this implication C, and that's the proof for each of them. Implication A follows simply from the following inequality, that individual value like this is controlled by the supremum across all values like this, and so the uniform convergence, which says that the right-hand side converges to zero with respect to the n, implies that the left-hand side, by the way, this inequality is true for every x, for every x here. Uh, so if you have the right-hand side converging to zero, then you have the left-hand side also converging to zero, and that's why you have this one. Uh, part B implication is the it also is also very simple because if you have the pointwise convergence, then the associated set A, the convergence set for the sequence Fn will be just the, the whole universal set, and so this one will be just empty one. That's why you have this, and in, in, in turn you have that the set difference with the complementing set will be empty set. That's why the measure of that is zero. Now implication C, that's the one which requires a little bit more work. So we start with the assumption that we have a almost everywhere convergence. Um, I call this set, which appears in this limit, let me call this set like this, a n epsilon, 
the notation here reflects the dependence on n and dependence on epsilon. Now I will build a, another set basing on this one, which will be like so, p k, which will be the union of these a n's for all n's big or equal than k. This is the decreasing sequence of subsets. B1 is the largest, B2 is smaller, B3 is even, even smaller, right? Because every time when you increase the index, you decrease the amount of sets which are involved in this union. Now, we also take the set B, which is the union of, or sorry, intersection of all of these, uh, and which also can be described with the term, with the help of the concept of limb soup of subsets. Now, what I I want to show is this. I want to show actually that this set B will be a subset in here. And that's how I'm going to show it. I start with the. So I'm going to show that the. Sorry, that the B is a subset in X, in X set difference with A. Why, why this is so? Because if I start with the with the X in the left hand side. This, by the by our interpretation of the meaning of limb soup, means that this x must be in infinitely many of these ones, which means that for every k bigger than one, there is an n after that k, such that x in the corresponding a n epsilon. Being in this subset, given the definition of this subset, is just equivalent to saying that this difference in absolute value bigger than epsilon, bigger or equal than epsilon. Now, if you combine these two things, so for every k you have an n bigger or equal than k such that this holds. This basically means that the point x is a point where limit limit i that doesn't exist or even if it does exist it's not equal to f of x. That's the point where you have divergence from the value f of x and that's why x belongs here. So this is justification for this embedding. Now, with the help of this embedding, now remember this is a set of measure zero because we started with the assumption that we have almost everywhere convergence, and so we have this chain of inequalities. On one hand, limit, no, sorry, uh, yes, limit like this is less a bigger or equal than zero. On the other hand, a n is embedded into b n, right? B k can, can, uh, larger than every individual set here. That's why a n smaller than bn. Now bn in fact or I'd rather say the limit of this it's one of the results we proved with you uh, in the results said actually if you have a sigma additive measure and we do have sigma additive measure and when you have the decreasing sequence of subsets then the limit of the individual measures across this sequence is equal to the limit of the intersection of it. We had such a problem in fact, this statement is equivalent to is equivalent to sigma additivity, and that's why we have this limit equal to b, which is less than measure of this one, and which is zero, and it's less because of this embedding, and that's why the this limit, in fact, is exactly zero, and that is the definition of convergence in measure.